Hi, in this module, I'm going to show you how you can use the machinery of linear predictors that we've developed so far to get some nonlinear predictors. So we're going to first focus on regression and then later talk about classification. So remembering regression, we're given some training data. We have a learning algorithm that produces a predictor. And the first key question or design decision is, which predictors is the learning algorithm allowed to choose from? That's the question of the hypothesis class. So for linear predictors, remember that the hypothesis class is defined to be the set of all predictors, f of x equals some weight vector dot some feature vector phi of x. And we allow the weight vector to range freely over all d-dimensional real vectors. Okay, so if we take phi of x equals one comma x, like we did before, then we can get some lines. So if we set the weight vector to be one comma 0.57, then we get this line with an intercept at one and a slope of 0.57. And here's a purple one with the intercept of two and a slope of 0.2. So all is good. But what happens if we get data that looks like this? If you try to fit a line through it, you won't be very happy with this. You really want to fit some sort of nonlinear predictor, something that can curve around to fit the data. So your first reaction might be to reach for something like neural networks or decision trees, something that's more complex. But let's see how far we can get with just using linear predictors. So the key thing is that the feature vector can be arbitrary. So let's take the feature vector to be one comma x as before, but let's just add on an x squared term, okay, just for fun. And so for example, if we feed x equals three, then we get the feature vector one comma three comma nine. Um, let's define some weights, two comma one comma 0 0.2. And let's plot what that function looks like. And we get a nice curve. So that's a nonlinear predictor. So it has a intercept of two, a slope of one at the origin, and a curvature of negative 0.2. Here's another one, four comma minus one comma 0.1. Here's an intercept of four, a slope of minus one, and a curvature of 0.1. And here's another one, 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 zero. So what does this one look like? This one just looks like a line because we've used a zero weight on this x squared term, so it just reduces to a linear predictor. In general, we can define a family of all quadratic predictors uh, that looks like this by ranging the weight vector really over all uh, three dimensional vectors. So here is our first example of getting a nonlinear predictor, in particular quadratic predictors, just by changing phi. So one small note here is that in one dimension, x squared is just a single feature. But if x were d-dimensional to begin with, then to get the range, full range of quadratic predictors, we would need d squared features, one for every x, i, x, j uh, pair. So that would be a lot. So that's one slight disadvantage of using the machinery of linear predictors to get nonlinear predictors. Let's move on. So quadratic predictors are great, but they can only kind of vary smoothly. What happens if you want a function that looks like uh, this? So here's an example of a piecewise constant predictor. And we can get this predictor also by just reimagining what a feature vector is. So here is, a, I'm gonna define phi of x equals and the first, I'm gonna carve up the input space into a bunch of regions and define a feature to be whether x lies in that region or not. So the first feature is tests whether x is between zero and one, and the indicator function will return one if that's true and zero otherwise. Um, the second one is gonna test between one and two, and so on. So here's an example. If you punch in 2.3, that is zero on all the feature slash regions except for this one. Okay, so if I set the weight vector 
corresponding to 1, 2, 4, 4, 3, then I get this function. And notice that each weight is just identifying the function value of that region. So between 0 and 1, the feature vector is, uh, sorry, the function is at 1, and then it's 2, and then it's 4, and then it's 3. Okay, so here's another one. It's 4, and then 3, 3, 2, uh, 1.5. And again, in general, the set of predictors is w dot phi of x, where w can range free. So this is a general technique, uh, piecewise constant functions, uh, which can give you expressive nonlinear predictors by partitioning the input space. So again, a caveat is that everything looks nice in one dimension, but if d x were d dimensions and each dimension were carved up into b regions, then you have b to the d different features, which is an exponential number of features, which is a kind of a no-go. So you can kind of get the idea now, but let's just do another example. Suppose you're trying to uh, predict a function with some periodic structure, like you're trying to predict uh, traffic patterns or sales of across a year. So imagine that you want to get a function that looks like this. Okay? So let's see if we can hack together a feature vector that does that. So v of x equals 1x and x squared. So put in the quadratic. And now let's add a cosine 3x. It's kind of arbitrary. Um, so here's an example. If you punch 2 into x, then you get this feature vector. Um, if you define the weights in a certain way, then you get that red uh, curve. You can take uh, define the weights this way, and then you get the purple curve, and, and so on. So here, the kind of a key idea is that you can really go wild. You can throw in any sort of features you want and get all sorts of wacky looking uh, predictors all using the machinery of linear predictor. So you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, how are we able to do this? Get all this expressive nonlinear capabilities when we haven't really changed the learning algorithm or it's, it's still supposed to be a linear predictor, right? Um, well, that's because the word linear is uh, a little bit ambiguous here. So remember the prediction is w dot phi of x. So that's the score. And the question is, what linear in what? So is the score linear in w? Yes, because the score is just sum constant times w. Is it linear in phi of x? Yes, because uh, it's sum thing times phi of x. How about is it linear in x? Well, the answer is no, because phi of x can be arbitrary, so it doesn't have to be linear in x. And the key idea behind nonlinearity is that there's two ways of viewing it. From the point of view of getting expressive nonlinear predictors, this is great because you can define phi of x to be something and get arbitrary nonlinear functions out. But from the point of view of having to learn such a uh, model, it's actually great because the score is a linear function of w. And when you're learning, you take the gradient with respect to w, so it's just a kind of a score is just a linear function. So uh, life is great. In fact, the learning algorithm doesn't even care what phi is. It only looks at the data through the lens of phi of x. It doesn't know whether you gave it x and then applied phi or you just gave it phi of x directly. OK, so now let's turn from regression to classification. The story is, story is pretty much the same. You can define arbitrary features and get nonlinear classifiers. Uh, but just to kind of review, um, remember in linear classification, you define in two dimensions, you define the feature vector to be x1, x2. Um, and if you define uh, the predictor as now a sign here, um, and the sign allows you to partition, define this decision boundary, which separates the region of the space which is labeled plus from the region of the space which is labeled minus. Okay, so now what does nonlinear mean? Well, if you look at f of x, because of the sine functions, it's already nonlinear, so it doesn't really make sense. So instead, nonlinearity for a classification means whether the decision boundary is linear or not. In particular, here is it a line. And if we define the feature vector as x1, x2, then we just get a line.
So, so now let's try to do something a little bit more interesting. So let's see if we can define a quadratic classifier. Suppose we wanted to define a classifier that looks like this. So it's a circle. The decision boundary is a circle where inside the circle we want to label as plus and outside we want to label as minus. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, let's start with a feature vector equals uh, x1, x2, as we had before. And now we're just going to tack on a quadratic term. So x1 squared plus x2 squared. Okay. And now if you define the corresponding weight vector to be 2, 2, minus 1, then I claim that this gives you exactly this decision boundary, which is a circle. So there's some algebra that you can do, which I'm going to uh, skip over. But what you can do is you can rewrite this expression as follows. So f of x, the same f of x, is equal to 1 if this quadratic form is less than or 2. So what is this? You might remember from kind of algebra or uh, trigonometry days that this is the square distance of a point to the point 1, 1. Okay, so in particular, if I constrain the square distance to be less or equal to 2, then this is the region of points with, within radius uh, square root of 2 of a circle centered at 1, 1, which is exactly what this is. And everything else is classified as minus 1. So the zim boundary we got successfully to be a circle. Okay, so. This is, let me try to take one more step to try to reconcile this tension between linear in phi of x and nonlinear in x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is remember the input space x, this decision boundary is a circle. And in feature space, we can see that the decision boundary is a line. So here is a cool animation that I found on YouTube, which I think it really nicely illustrates this. So this is done in the context of SVM, but the idea is the same. So here we have points in, inside the circle and outside the circle in the ambient uh, X space. They're not separable. What we're going to do is we're going to apply the feature map. And the feature map, remember, adds this third dimension, x1 squared plus x2 squared. And now we're in feature space, which is 3D. And in 3D, we can actually slice a linear predictor that separates the, green, the red and the blue points. And that separation induces a circle in the original 2D space. OK, to summarize, so linear is ambiguous. So we have a, a predictor in a case of regression, which is w dot phi of x. It's linear in w and phi of x, but it's nonlinear in x. And this is what allows us to get nonlinear predictors using the machinery of linear predictor. We saw for regression, nonlinearity just talks about the predictor directly, and in classification, we talk about the decision boundary. We also saw many types of nonlinear features, quadratic features, piecewise constant, periodic features. And again, you can kind of make up your own features for the application you have in mind. So next time someone on the street asks you about linear predictors, you first have to clarify linear and what. Okay, that's the end.